Dear guests, we are glad to greet you at our annual English-speaking conference devoted to Taras Avramorovich Shevchenko. This year we celebrate the 200th anniversary of his birth in Ukraine and it's a great reason to speak about his life and his works. Taras Avramorovich Shevchenko is a foremost Ukrainian poet, prose writer, painter and playwright in 19th century and he was a major figure of Ukrainian national revival. Taras Shevchenko was a man of universal talent. All his life and great work were dedicated to the people of Ukraine. The poor dreamed about time when his country would be a free sovereign state where the Ukrainian language, culture and history would be high world. Uh, we give the floor to students of gymnasium number two. They will tell us about Suchenko's childhood and youth. Ivan Franko said he had been a peasant son and become a lord in the kingdom of the Elias Pirate. He had been a serf and become a, a titan in the realm of human culture. He had been a self-taught and educated new, fresh and free ways to professor and scientists. I think everyone will guess who will speak about. You know many interesting things about exile and creation this poet. So, what you know about his youth and childhood? What kind of person he was? What did he start with? Taras Shevchenko was born on March 9 in the village of Moritz, in the Nikolaev Kakanti. But then he spent his uh, childhood in Kirillivka. Do you know why does it important to family reunions? Taras' forefathers were Cossacks, who served in the Zaporizhian host and took part in the liberation wars and uprising of Ukrainian East in the 17th and 18th centuries. Very interesting, but my interest to is personality less than your. I know that uh, once uh, young, uh, I know that uh, once young Taras went looking after the iron pillar that fought up the sky and got lost in the field. Two months he met the boy, took him along and brought him to Kirillivka. Hmm, I think that this boy was very brave and curious, wasn't he? I agree with you. Also Shevchenko has shown his ability since childhood. In the fall of uh, 1822, Taras started to take some grammar classes at the local Diak, Sovye. During 1822-1828, Shevchenko painted horses soldiers. And what about this picture? Unfortunately, that work was not found. How excellent! It is known that Taras' childhood and youth was very terrible. His father died a serf in Kowy. Taras went to work for Yakov Horsky, who just away from Kiev in 1824. As an apprentice, Taras carried water, hit up a school, served the presenter, did songs over the dead, and continued to study. Soon died of anger and was in the statement, Shevchenko ran away to seek out a painting master in the surrounding villages. For several days, he worked for Yakov Ephraim in Guzian. Do you know Julia about Shevchenko's friends? Yes. In 1827, Shevchenko created a community ship near his village. He then meets Oksana Kovalenko, a childhood friend whom Shevchenko mentioned in his works on multiplied occasions. He dedicated to her the introduction to his poem, Mariana the Noon. And I know that in 1828, Shevchenko was hired as serving boy to Lord Scout in Vishana, where he went for permission to study at Kirillivka Artis. Yes, and then, when the last June 14, Vasily and Rikard died, and Rich Kirillivka became the property of his son, Paolo and Rikard. Shevchenko was turned into food service person of the Newland Board at the Vishana Estates. I have heard a lot about the event which had happened this period. Tell me, please. On December 11, 1828, Pavel Rikard called Shevchenko at night painting a portrait of Kozak Smatvi Platon, a hero of the patriotic war. He woke the ears of the boy and ordered him to be in the stables with rods. The next day, the order was executed by a watchman sailor who forgave Shevchenko. Oh, and the guard was very cruel. Almost two and a half years from fall of 8 for 11.28 to start of 18.31, Shevchenko stayed with his master in Vienna. The details of the trial are not well known. Perhaps they he attended lectures by the professor of painting John Houston at the University of Vienna. 
After moving from Vilna to St. Petersburg in 1831, Art took along Shevchenko. To have eventually a benefit of work of art among the nobility was a fashion to have the own chamber artist. He gave him to study for four years uh, to the bench of Vasily Shiai. From that point until 1838, he lived in Krasnovsky building when Shiai had an apartment. At night, free from work's time, Shevchenko uh, visited the summer garden uh, when he depicted the status. There he also started to write his poems. There he met the Ukrainian artist Ivan Soshenko, who introduced him to other compatriots such as Yevhen Rubinka and Vasily Hehorovich, and to the Russian painter Alexei Vinciano. Through this man, Shechenko also met the famous painter uh, and professor Karl Grilov, who donated his portrait of Russian, of Russian poet Vasily Zhukovsky as a lottery prize whose proceeds were used to buy Shevchenko's freedom on the 5th of May 1838. I was a team ahead of them, beyond the village of the land. The magic of the sun, perhaps, or it was what it affected me. <clears throat> I felt this joy all ever come, and so is God. The time for lunch club we have long passed by, and still <clears throat> among the weeks I lay, for me, an often peasant boy, or why such bliss so few reserve? The sky seem bright, the village fair, the very lamps is keen to rejoice. The sun rays warmed, but did not sear, but not for long the sign stay kind, not long in bliss, I pray. In the same year, Shenko also, in the same year, Sochenko was accepted into the Academy of Arts in the workshop of Carter Law. Next year, he became a resident of student at the Association for the Encouragement of Artists. At the annual examination at the Imperial Academy of Arts, Sochenko was given a silver medal for landscape. The time of his first oil painting, The Back of Boy King, Best Dog. When Sochenko uh, he be when Shchenko began writing poetry, he released a part of the tragedy Mikita Haidai. Ivan Franko, the renowned Ukrainian poetry in the generation after, after Shchenko said, Kovra immediately revealed a new form of poetry. It burst forth a light spring of clear, cold water and struggled are dominated in the play. The scenic quality of the drama has provided great success and it is still part of the repertoire of Ukrainian theatres. In early 1847, Shevchenko started to work as a teacher of visual arts at Kyiv University. There, he has engaged in the activity of clandestine St. Kirill and the Body Society. When the secret society was suppressed by Russian authorities in 1847, Shevchenko was punished by exile and compulsory military service with a form writing the poems Dream, A Parcel and Caucasus which satirized the operation of Ukraine by Russia and prophesied a revolution. Through forbidden to write or pain, Shevchenko clastinately wrote a few lyrical poems uh, during the first year of exile. He had revival of creativity after his release in 1857. His later poetry treats historical and moral issues, both Ukrainian and universal. In 1857, Taras Shevchenko was allowed to return from exile, and in 1858, he eventually returned to Moscow and then came to St. Petersburg. In 1859, he has managed to come to Ukraine, uh, yet he was refused to write live in his homeland permanently, so he was forced to return to Petersburg. First of all, Shevchenko is known as a poet. 
His poetry contributed greatly to the growth of Ukrainian national consciousness and his influence on various fates of Ukrainian intellectual, literary and national life is still felt to this day. Taras Shevchenko is also known one of the most prominent Ukrainian masters of visual arts. He has worked with easel painting, graphic arts, decorative and ornamental painting as as well as sculpture, watercolor and oil painting. He is the author of more than a thousand pieces of art, uh, more than 160 of which are unfortunately lost. In 1859 1860 the artist has created action for the work of Russian and foreign authors. For this he was entitled to membership in Academy of Action. School number five is going to speak us about Rasyushenko as a famous artist. The great poet, ardent patriot, thinker and humanist Shevchenko is at one and the same time an outstanding master of Ukrainian painting and graphic art the founder of critical realism and the folk element in Ukrainian fine art. My soul is strongly and painfully suffer without painting, Shevchenko said. His first serious paintings were born under the influence of the outstanding Russian artist Karbilo, who represented romanticism in painting. Uh, these masterpieces brought him first recognition, what is more, Shevchenko was called Ukrainian Rembrandt. The themes of Shevchenko works, depicting life in Ukraine at that time, are very diverse in that. Among them, we can single out the watercolor composition of 1841, Gypsy Fortune Teller, which was awarded a silver medal by the Council of the Academy of Arts. This, in turn, led to the still created canvas, Katerina, in which the epic social exposing theme sounded out in full voice. The poem of the same name served as the basis for this painting. The theme of Katerina is an actual one for that period. In it, Shevchenko exposed the tragic fate of the Ukrainian self girl, who was seduced and then abandoned and disgraced by a Russian officer. This painting is an important page in the history of Ukrainian art, a new word in the formation of the folk element and critical realism in art. Katerina, heart of mine, fate is cruel and unkind. Where on earth can you go now with your orphan child? Who will ask or warmly greet you without a husband? Father, mother, strangers are difficult and stubborn. Katerina soon recovered every day her eager gaze through the window was the roadway as she rocked her tiny babe. He doesn't come, he doesn't come. Does she watch in vain? She'd go to weep in the orchard, but people will stare. Out of sight, <coughs> Katarina in the orchard walks. In her arms, her son she carries, and the pastry calls. Here, she waited for her love. Here, they linger talking. And there, and there, my son, my son, her was broke and halted. <laughs> In the spring of 1843, after 14 years of separation from his homeland, Shevchenko visited his native Ukraine. In Ukraine, under the influence of everything seen and experienced, the idea of a periodical art edition entitled Picturesque Ukraine came to Shevchenko. And so, having arrived to St. Petersburg, he enthusiastically commenced this work. Shevchenko divided up the edition into three parts. Ukrainian landscapes showing the beauty of the country or expressing its historical meaning were included into the first part. The second part included scenes from the everyday life of that period. The third consisted of action depicting the historical past of the Ukrainian people. The artist depicted many scenes from the lives of the oppressed and suffering people. He painted what was most dear to his heart, the paternal hut of Taras Revolver Shrychenko in the village of Karelivka. It was here that the little, little orphan Taras spent his gloomy and joyless childhood. Here his heart was first stung by human injustice, 
founded on the rule of a rich poor, of a poor. The painting A Peasant Family is worn by the poet's great love for the people and you can almost sense the compassion and really the peacefulness radiating from it. You did not play me false, O fate. You were my brother, closest friend to this poor wretch. You took my hand when I was still a little tot and walked me to the deacon's school to gather knowledge from the soul. My boy, just study hard, you said, and you'll be somebody in time. I listened, started, fortune had, got educated, but you lied. What am I now? But never mind. We walked the straight bus, you and I. We have not cheated, compromised, or lived the very slightest life. So let's march on, the fate of mine, my humble, truthful, faithful, faithful friend. Keep marching on, the glory lies. March forward, that's my testament. Among the paintings of this period is a great number of portraits, including those of Majewska, Oleksandr Limonovich, Ilana Suhu, Gorlenko, Elizabeth Gayato, and others. In these portraits, especially in those of women, you can easily trace the influence of Brulot. He was delicate not only in the manner of painting, but also in the way he relieved the images, when traditional idealization united with the desire to convey the personality of a person. While still a student at the Academy of Arts, Shevchenko created a magnificent watercolored painting Maria on the theme of Pushkin's poem Moldava. And already in the spring of 1841, Shevchenko's name could be found alongside such names as Karl and Alexander Brilov, Fedor Tolstoy, Andrei Sapozhikov, and other outstanding artists. In the spring of 1845, Shevchenko completed his studies at the Academy of Arts and returned to Ukraine. But he didn't stay in Ukraine for long. On the 5th of April in 1847, he was arrested and without a trial as a rank and file soldier to the far off Caspian steppes. During his first year, his years in exile, Shevchenko portrayed himself in a uniform. The famous Shevchenko words, I am punished, I suffer, but I do not repent, belong to this period. As his prison without doors, as he himself called it, Shevchenko, in a period of 10 years, created the greater part of his wonderful works. Among them are Shevchenko's self-portraits. The words included in this series 
impressed us with their deep thought, critical acuteness with which the artists condemned the evils of surrounding reality. Included in the series is punishment in the stocks. We see the hero of the parable with a wooden block in his mouth portrait on the background of an old Petrovsky barracks. This served to signify the people who had no freedom of speech. In the right hand corner of the painting we see Shachenko's profile, as if conveying that he himself was a witness of these inhuman tortures. The best works of Shevchenko after his exile were those done in the technique of etching with aquatine. The exceptions are some of the self-portraits and portraits in paints and pencil. Among the later mentioned are the wonderful portraits of the actor Shevchenko and the outstanding Negro actor Ira Aldrich. It is enough to compare these portraits with the artist's earlier ones to be convinced of the truth of Shevchenko's realistic mastery. As to the free and easy stroke and the profound psychological depiction, these portraits can be placed on a par with the best portraits of the masters of the late 19th century. In the art of etching, Shevchenko achieved such great success that the Imperial Academy of Arts was obliged to award him with the honorable title of Academician Engraver. In the summer of 1859, during his last days in Ukraine, Sochenko created only a small number of sketches for he was carefully watched by genres. Under these conditions, there could be no freedom of creative work. But even so, Sochenko accomplished is still a great no uh, interest to us. His work, acuted while in Ukraine, as to their mastery and realistic expression, are way ahead of his era and can be undoubtedly placed on a pair with the drawing of the most outstanding artist of the late 19th century. And like the literary heritage of Shevchenko, his works in the fine arts are immortal. They will continue to live for ages, reminding mankind of the great creative deed that the great son of humanity accomplished for the welfare of people the world over. And yet the eye sees something near, the heart for something seems to wait. It weeps and whimpers, yearns and aches, just like a thought that not been fed. Perhaps the sins that lie ahead will evil prove, await no good. Long, long for a freedom, don't await. It is asleep, our aggression suddenly it to sleep. But if you dwell this sickly freedom, all the folk into their hands must legislate, and it says, jump and well, then go, the sleeping freedom to awake. If not, the wretched still will stay asleep right up to judgment day. The master class will keep it loose. More palaces and shrines they rebuild, their drunken tsar they will adore. Sin prices to Byzantium sway, and all the sins say, nothing more. Thank you for your attention. The rust of Shem was really the form of the foundation for the modern Ukrainian literature to a degree that he is also considered the founder of the modern written Ukrainian language. The name of Taras Shevchenko is well known not only in Ukraine but in the whole world. Monuments to him were erected in numerous countries. His literary works were translated all into almost all languages in the, of the world. The National Opera House, Kiev National University, a central boulevard in Kiev, as well as, 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 well as many establishments, streets and square, bears the name of the great Ukrainian poet and artist Taras Shevchenko. Students of Dubno School Gymnasium have prepared about monuments and memorials to Shevchenko in Ukraine. Good afternoon. We are the representatives of the school gymnasium. We are going to talk about the monuments to Taras Shevchenko in Ukraine. Monuments to Taras Shevchenko Shevchenko have been appeared in different cities of Ukraine in recent years. People remember, uh, people remember the great Kozak, the poet, writer, artist.
Times think are finally rebel and the national hero. The monument to the great Ukrainian poet Teres Shevchenko is located in the Shevchenko Park in front of the red building of the Kiev National Teres Shevchenko University. Mm. Next. Mm. You can see... Uh, Today, the monument was installed to honor the 125th anniversary of Shevchenko's birthday and now it's one of the symbols of the modern Kyiv. Since Ukraine became independent in 1999, there has been a tradition to lay flowers to the monument on the occasions of national Ukrainian holidays or for the visits of honorable guests. Today, the monument is the main attraction in the city. The meetings of citizens, the strikes of different political forces, public gathering, different cultural events are often held there. For example, the annual Shevchenko Prize is traditionally uh, presented near the monument. The Shevchenko Monument in Lviv is a recent addition to the city's cultural landscape. It was established in 1992 and despite its newness has become one of the most visible images of Lviv. There is a 12 meter stella to the left of the figure of Shevchenko, which is meant to symbolize the wave of Ukrainian revival. Located in the very heart of the city, the monument is a popular meeting point day and night for performances and informal gatherings. The monument is located on the main street of the city, the uh, prospect of freedom. It's surrounded with flowers, beautiful lights that amaze our eyes. Here at the monument, there are organized festive celebrations for residents and guests of Lviv. There are protests and memory actions. Here come the newlyweds to lay flowers and make memorable wedding pictures. You can see it's hard to know, but before it was Lviv, so you can get it right there. <laughs> the monument is a great sign of the Ukrainian people that Shevchenko was opened in Kharkiv on March 25, 1935. As far as we know, this is one of the oldest memorials to Taras Shevchenko. The monument is a multiform composition, while at the same time it's a perceived as internal whole. The and the most beautiful between all the monuments of Western Ukraine. It was created in 1990 near the House of Culture of the town Dubna. As far as we know, Shevchenko was here in the autumn of 1846. In my opinion, the monument to the Rastrochenko in our town is an attraction for the tourists from all the corners of Ukraine and the world in a whole. This is our pride and a symbol of our respect to the national hero, the greatest and the most. In conclusion, I'd like to say that we all hope that we'll continue honoring the Rastrochenko Shevchenko and new monuments to him will appear all around the world. Thank you for your attention very much. And now we give the floor to students of school number seven and they will prepare the information about monuments and memorials to Shevchenko's abroad. Taras Lehorovich Shevchenko is a Ukrainian poet and artist, one of the leading figures of modern Ukrainian literature. The author who pick up the Ukrainian literature language throughout them. The poet's great renown has spread far beyond the borders of his homeland. Wherever Ukrainians live, they put up monuments to the bot. Outside of Ukraine, monuments to Shevchenko have been put up in many countries, usually under the initiative of local Ukrainian diasporas. Mm -hmm. There are several memorial societies and monuments to him throughout Canada and the United States, South America and Europe. People in all races, nationalities, beliefs and political views see the erection of monument to Shevchenko as a demonstration of deep respect and love for Ukraine's nation national genius and as international recognition for his contribution to world culture. The Rastrochenko Museum Memorial Park Foundation is located in Toronto, Canada. In 1951, a monument to Shevchenko was erected in Oakville, near the city of Toronto. A two-ton bronze statue of Shevchenko, located in a memorial park outside of Oakville, Ontario, was discovered stolen 
in 2006. It was taken for scrap metal. The head was recovered in a damaged state, but the statue was not repairable. Only the head of the statue survived. It's located in Shevchenko Museum in Toronto. Another monument to Shevchenko was erected in Winnipeg, in Canada, in 1961. The bronze statue was created in New York by Andrew Dragon, who was assisted by Roman Kovac of Winnipeg. The unveiling of the monument took place in 1961 in the presence of a very large mass of people from all parts of Canada and the United States, numbering over 40,000. Witnessing and participating in the ceremony were the highest dignitaries of the federal and provincial governments, the university, the Ukrainian churches and organizations, and representatives of several ethnic groups in Canada and the United States. The town of Vita in Manitoba, Canada, was originally named Shevchenko in his honor. There is a bust of Charles Shevchenko in Shevchenko School there. The Trashevchenko Memorial is located near the neighborhood of Washington, D.C. A relief depicting premises is located beside the statue. Leo Mo created the bronze statue that stands next to the granite sculpture. This high bronze granite monument, weighing uh, 45 tons, was unveiled. There are two monuments to Shevchenko in Brazil. There is a statue of Charles Shevchenko and Ukrainians were in Curitiba, Brazil, sculpted Charles Andrew. The monument was erected in 1967. Another one located in Prudentopolis. The monument was erected on the 3rd of December in 1989. Sculptor Leo Moll, architect Miroslav Litsiva and Jirko Jonal Nazarenko. In 1971, the first monument to Shevchenko appeared in Buenos Aires, the capital of Argentina. The monument was erected during the festival in Buenos Aires in 1971. To the right of statue is a 30-ton sculpture is granite of Shevchenko's greatest literary work, the Haida Max, sculptor Leo Mol. A bust and plaque honoring the Ukrainian poet Tara Shevchenko were placed, were placed in the city of Incarnation, Paraguay. Beneath the biographical date in Spanish and Ukrainian, the plaque reads, Homage to the Ukrainian pioneers who came to the era of Itapua. Uh, there is a Shchanko Square in Paris located in the heart of the central Saint uh, German Republic district, the bronze and granite bust of Shevchenko was unveiled in Michel Boulevard beside the Ukrainian church in 1974. It, it was present from the city of Kiev, sculptor, sculptor and architect Malinovsky. The bronze and marble monument, more than three meters high, was erected in two centuries and ten in Athens, Greece. Sculptors Volodymyr Otrykiewski and Vasil Otrykiewski, architect Mikhailo Filiu. Original monument Ben Shichenko is depicted as a Roman petition, opened in 1973 in Rome, Italy, to the great Greek castle, cathedral of Saint Sophia, the author, Italian sculptor, Maisei Dublin. In Budapest, Hungary, three meters bronze monument was unveiled in 2 century and seven. The project of this Monument was developed by professor of the Lviv Academy of Arts, Mikhail. The sculpture shows the young poet as he was in his time in Warsaw. On the pedestal is inscribed a quote from the poem Poles in both Polish and Ukrainian. In front of the monument, the burning bushes ground. According to Ukrainian tradition, this is a way of commemorating the victims of the Great Famine. Uh, the sculpture, designed by Anatoly Gusht, was unveiled in 2002. The monument in Billy Bure, Poland, was erected in 1991. It was a gift from Ukraine to the Ukrainians of Poland, and uh, sculptor Vasil Boledai, architect Anatoly Ignashenko. This monument was inaugurated on the Renaissance Square in Sofia, Bulgaria in uh, 2009. The monument was created for the donations of Ukrainians uh, that live in Bulgaria, Ukrainian diplomats and Bulgarian citizens, also in Ivan Lechanik.
The bust of the Russian champion in Skopje, Macedonia and the monument in Prague were unveiled in 2009. In Romania, the monument to Shevchenko was erected in 1997 in the Herestrial Park in Bucharest. The other monument uh, was erected in front of the Ukrainian Cultural um, Center in the village of Nevestina in 1993. Outside of Ukraine, monument to Shevchenko have been put up in several locations of the former USSR uh, associated with his legacy, both in the Soviet and the post-Soviet time. The modern uh, monument in St. Petersburg erected in 2000, but the first monument was built in the city in 1918. This 3-meter high bronze monument was donated to the city of St. Petersburg uh, by the Canadian sculpture Leonov. A powerful 14-meter monument of Taras Shevchenko in Moscow, Russia was unveiled in 1964 in commemoration of the 150th anniversary of Shevchenko's birth, located on a square in front of Ukraina quarter. Bronze, granite, sculpture Yuri Sinkevich and Anatoly Fuzhenko Mikhail Hrytsuk. There is also a monument located next to the Shevchenko Museum at the square that bears the poet's name in Orsk, Russia. The location of the military garrison where the fight served. Where there are also a street, a library and the Orsk Pedagogical Institute named to the poet, sculptor Pisarevsky, architect Hobelko. The ceremony was unveiling of a monument was held in 1950. The city of Tau was uh, named Shevchenko between 1964 and 1992 and uh, nearby there is Fort Shevchenko, a small town about uh, two, uh, two hours uh, from Octavo. Uh, it was the primary location of Taras Shevchenko exiling Tsarist Russia. The Shevchenko Memorial Museum opened in uh, 1932, uh, uh, near where he had been uh, hiding. A monument to the uh, but uh, also stands in Ashkabat and uh, in Tashkent, Pakistan. Shevchenko dreamed of a journey to Western Ukraine, in particular Berlin, and his dream came true in the autumn of 1846. During his journey, Taras Shevchenko visited our town too. So, to summarize the work of the conference, the resolution was made. Taras Shevchenko was a man of universal talent. He was a Ukrainian poet, writer, artist, public and political figure, as well as folklorist and ethnographer. His literary heritage is regarded to be the foundation of modern Ukrainian literature and to a large extent, the modern Ukrainian language. His work and life are regarded by the Ukrainians and his impact on Ukrainian literature is immense. Shevchenko is also known for many masterpieces as a painter and an illustrator. He was the founder of critical realism and the folk elements in Ukrainian visual arts. There are many monuments to Shevchenko throughout Ukraine and abroad. His literary works were translated into almost all languages of the world. All his life and creative work were dedicated to the people of Ukraine. Shevchenko is a favorite author of millions of Ukrainians, a real people's poet. He inspired some of protesters the Euromaidan. Thank you for participation and hope to meet you next year.
Now, uh, the same uh, certificate of participation is given to Dubno Gymnasium number two. Um, Yeah,